All right, guys, so next up, we're going to be taking a look at the process behind actually using keyframes to lower music and to lower background audio. For example, in the case of this, we have um, an example here for you where this is a track or this is a potential video project that I'd be working on where um, it is uh, some B-roll footage here and then it is me saying some stuff here and then followed by some more B-roll footage, except we've got this loud track going on the whole time that you can't really hear what I'm saying here um, so if I actually give this a play for you listen you, you can barely hear what I'm even saying and we want to explore the process right now with you that would actually involve lowering a background track for a set portion of time while you could hear me speak better or hear whoever would be in this potential video speak better and then obviously bring that audio back up for the clip at the end and obviously have it uh, keep it on the maximum volume for these clips at the beginning, but just have it dip down so we could hear me or the AKA the speaker much better and much clearer. So let's go about how we would actually do that. And it's a very similar process to actually how we would um, do the keyframes before. But if we just give this a play right now, um, we could start seeing where we would actually want to kind of put this in. So if we actually give this a play and listen, it looks like Right here we start talking and the b-roll fades out so we'd maybe want to start that fade right about here and it would probably kick in right about here just after I've started talking. And the way we would actually go about these, this guys is using the decibels and actually lowering those using keyframes. So if we select our clip, you guys can look that the effect control for just an audio clip doesn't consist of all the same stuff that it did before with the opacity, all that stuff when we actually select a visual clip. If we just select the audio clip, we are just greeted by the volume volume control. And what we can actually do by this, guys, is tell the volume control that at this point right here, it is zero decibels, okay? And zero decibels is essentially neutral. That is uh, the, the, the base volume that you have recorded at, whatever that may be, and it is zero decibels, okay? So then we could actually, once we've told the program and once we've told the volume control that at three seconds and 51 milliseconds, the decibels are at zero. Then we could actually skip in a little bit to just after this is faded out. So it's now four seconds and 46 seconds. And we could actually lower that to minus 30. And minus 30 is a significant decibel decrease. Um, I'm not too sure how much the max is. So the, the max you could go down is minus 287.5. I assure you minus 30 is um, a lot of a a lot of a minus. Trust me. Um, and um, right here, if we actually give this a play now, I believe it looks like we probably will have lowered the volume, hopefully good enough, so that you can start hearing the speaker, aka in this video clip, it's me. And then you can actually, um, the, well, the song will actually then go on to actually increase the volume back over here once we've actually done that keyframe adjustment after we can see if this is working. So let's go ahead and give this a play and see if this is lowering at the right time and also if it is uh, enough of a decrease that we can start to hear the speaker. So we're just giving this a play. Let's have a look now. And there you guys have it. That is a nice little example of my style and my quality in terms of video production and overall just what you can expect if we are going to work together in the future. Very nice. So as you can see, you can definitely hear me a lot better now. However, we still haven't added that final um, keyframe adjustment at the end, seeing as the uh, the the um, the song actually still stays quite quiet after this next piece of footage comes up at the end, where actually we would want to increase that volume back up to uh, be that of a um, nice backing track, so we could actually match these visuals very nicely, as well as uh, as also allowing room for the speaker to be heard. So the the way we would do this is simply by reversing that simple process we did there is we would actually go to where we would want the volume to start increasing. For example, just before this starts fading in here and I start finishing and we would actually want to set another keyframe. Okay. So that's going to tell it at this point right here, it is still minus 30 decibels so that it can start working its way up. For example, if we didn't add that 30 decibels here and we actually just instantly started going to let's say zero decibels again, it would have not, um, it would have been a gradual buildup rather. So here where it goes down to 30, it would then instantly just start going straight back up because 
it is the the keyframe right after it so to avoid that we would actually duplicate this keyframe here aka come into where we want to do it and just go ahead and put it another so it knows that the parameters from here to here stay the same okay so all the way along here it is minus 30 it's not minus 30 here increasing to zero for example here where that would be a long build up it is minus 30 to minus 30 and then we could play this just a little bit to about here and actually just go ahead and put that back on zero so that now if we play this it has a gradual build up and overall that is a nice sequence that we have actually just improved the uh, the overall audio quality of whereas we could not even hear the speaker before and now we've actually created a very nice keyframe adjustment to the audio where our audio is going to dip down for the speaker and actually increase once the speaker is done talking to actually show off this other stuff down here. So if I actually just go ahead and render in and out again and just go ahead and render that through once so that we can, uh, so that we can actually have a nice full seamless preview of what this is looking like and what it's sounding like and I will just stop talking while we watch this through entirely so we could see how much of a difference this has actually changed this and um, how much of an improvement this has made to the overall um, quality of the audio and how much we can actually hear and understand what's going on in this particular sequence that we've set up. and overall just what you can expect if we are going to work together in the future. So very nice. You can see that it even um, might even start a little bit too early as it cuts off a little bit of what I was saying. So we could even highlight those two and move those over a little bit, right? And overall, I think that's an ex extremely nice sequence that we've just worked there together. Um, and we've actually built this to actually lower the volume when we want the speaker to be heard, aka right here. Video production and overall, just what you can expect if we are going to work together in the future. Boom. I think that's a great example right there. Really, really nice. Overall, I'm very happy with that. And I think that definitely um, paints the picture of actually using those decibels and actually how to animate them using the keyframes to actually lower or even reverse that process. And for example, not just be lowering them here, but maybe even in some sort of scenario, um, hiring those decibels and increasing them um, to not a minus, but actually a plus and, um, you know, increasing those decibels instead of removing them. But overall, that's been a brief insights into how to actually control audio and lower or higher the volume using keyframes within Adobe Premiere Pro.